um, the meeting of the Howard Planning Board for July 26th, 2016. Um, and the first order of business tonight is a public hearing, application PB 2016-5, Craig and Terry L. Borden owners, and Mr. O'Reilly, Lynn, um, <coughs> Surveyor representing seek approval of a two lot definitive subdivision plan pursuant to the code of the town of Harwich, section 325.18 Q3 for satisfactory access for a panhandle lot, lot two, as set forth in Mass General Law, chapter 41, section 81K GG. The property is known as 424 Pleasant Lake Avenue, map 91 parcel. J3-4 in the RR Zoning District. Mr. O'Reilly? Do we have to have uh, Mr. and Mrs. Borden up here? No? <laughs> Ms. Kelly? Introduce yourself and we'll get right to it. Sure. You made I, it okay? I did. Uh, I, do wanna, I do wanna thank Mr. BB. Um, from the rec department to allowing me to switch things around and I'm so I, I'm gonna st step in front of them again so um, as the application stated uh, very clearly um, for the record my name is John O'Reilly surveyor working for the Bordens um, we are looking to create a two lot subdivision on their property on Pleasant Lake Ave, Route 124. The purpose of the subdivision is the Bordens are interested in building a second dwelling out there for themselves. And we've proposed, uh, as, it, as I said, a two lot subdivision with one of the lots being a panhandle lot off of um, Hinkley. The property of the subdivision is, um, meets the rules and regulations of your, um, rules and regulations of subdivision and <clears throat> but we're here under through a definitive because of the panhandle request um, Hinkley Road is a is a paved road private way which uh, the Bordens uh, do have rights in uh, we're providing a 35 foot wide panhandle per your regulations and we have um, a total upland area of 50,696 square feet with a shape factor of 17.2 for the new newly created parcel. The second parcel um, currently has an existing single family dwelling on it with a detached garage. And that has a lot area of 40,104 square feet and a shape factor of 19.6. Um, <clears throat> I have read uh, staff's comments and um, they seem pretty straightforward. <coughs> Be happy to answer any questions that the that the board may have, and of course, Craig and Terry are here as well. If I can't answer something, okay, <coughs> Charlene, if you could summarize the um, staff comments, please. I need longer tails here. Um, I think Mr. O'Reilly uh, gave the basics of what the application is. Um, the lots appear to meet all the requirements of both zoning and the subdivision rules and regulations. The Conservation Commission has already issued a permit for the proposed house and a dock um, on this new lot too, the Panhandle lot. Uh, they will have to abide by all order of conditions. Uh, the Board of Health approved the definitive plan on July 16th. Uh, we are awaiting the letter. We do know that they approved it, however. Okay. Yeah, oh, do you have it? Oh. Just got it today. Okay. I um, can I steal that from you, Craig? Um, I will jump to the chase regarding the conditions, um, and these would have to be placed on the plan before the board endorsed it, assuming that they approved it. Uh, the Harwich Board of Health will not consider any variances from Title V or Harwich Board of Health regulations for any of the lots. The subdivision will be served by town water. And third, in order to prepare for any connection to sewer system, a sewer line will exit the building on the street side. And those are the three conditions imposed by the Board of Health. Sure. I'll give this back to you. Uh, so that would have to be noted on the plan, as I said. 
Um, the police department from law enforcement and safety aspect, the police department has no issue with application PB 2016-15 regarding Craig Borden application for two lots off Finkley Road. Building department, the plan does not show parking for either lot. Adequate parking needs to be described and shown on the plan. I'll address that in a second. Engineering had no concerns as long as the stamp plans are provided. The uh, <coughs> larger plans that I've provided to you are stamped. Um, and the fire department has no concerns. Um, with regard to the building department's comments, a definitive subdivision plan is not required to show parking or driveways. Uh, they would have to show this, however, at the time they apply for their building permit. Um, and uh, as I said, the full size plans are stamped and signed by the surveyor. And if anybody has any questions of me, I'd be happy to answer them. Does anybody in the board have any questions or comments? I'm trying to locate it. it I know there's a seat plan there. Is that the lot you're talking about? I'm sorry? Oh, you're next to them. I'm trying to locate it on Hankins Park. Okay. And uh, just for, for my interest, even though it's not required, uh, the currently the house has an address on Hinkley's Drive, I presume? No, the house is uh, uh, Mr. Chair, if um, Mr. Borden's going to respond, he does need to go to a microphone. Um, the recording secretary will be doing this off of the uh, tape, so we do need to hear what folks have to say. Come right up and have a seat, unless your wife would like to speak. Uh, the house that's there now is technically 424 Pleasant Lake Avenue, and we're dividing it into two lots. Mm -hmm. So the address is pretty much what the town tells me it is, I think. It, isn't that how it works? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Any other questions? Yeah, I just have one. Uh, approximately how far is the driveway for lot two as it comes into Hinkley Road? going to be from Pleasant Lake Avenue, just approximately? Um, <clears throat> the panhandle is just shy of about 200 feet. 200 feet from Pleasant Lake Avenue? Uh, hmm. Actually, the, I'm feet. sorry. I'm, I'm, the driver will be coming off of Hinkley Road. Correct. And that stretch is just about 200 feet. That panhandle is about 200 feet. No, I think you're misunderstanding. You're talking about the length of the panhandle. I'm talking about the distance from the driveway to Pleasant Lake Avenue. Oh, I'm sorry. I did misunderstand you. Yeah, um, that's all right. I would say it's probably closer to 50 to 60 feet. 50 to 60 feet. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Any questions from the public? There are no questions from the public. Next, Joe. Uh, I move that we adopt the following findings of fact. One, that said parcel was endorsed, endorsed as part of an approval not required plan by the board on April 28, 2015, and recorded in plan book 658, page 27. Two, the land is situated in a residential rural RR zone. Three, said lots demonstrate compliance of minimum dimension requirements for frontage, area, and shape. Four, lot two has frontage on a private way shown on a plan approved and endorsed in accordance with the subdivision control law and under panhandle regulations has proper frontage plus or minus 35 feet on Hinkley Road, a way that is safe and adequate. Five, lot two satisfies all requirements under 325-18Q for a panhandle lot as suitable access by a driveway said lot is provided within the panhandle and in the opinion of the board, the access is wide enough and otherwise satisfactory for a driveway. Um, be, 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 before I accept the second, um, would we, <coughs> do I hear a motion to close the public hearing before we vote? So moved. Okay, so seconded. It's been moved and seconded. And it's been moved and seconded by Joe and seconded by Peter. To adopt the to adopt. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Move to approve the application for a two-lot definitive subdivision for Craig and Terry Borden based on the foregoing findings and the fact that application meets the necessary requirements 
and criteria for approval pursuant to the code of the town of Howitch for the definitive subdivision plan entitled Definitive Subdivision Plan of Lot Floor as, floor, as shown on Plan Book 658, page 27 in Howitch, Massachusetts, as surveyed and prepared for Craig and Terry Borden by <coughs> J.M. O'Reilly and Associates, uh, dated June 13, 2016, scale 1 to 30. I'll second that motion. It's been moved and seconded. Hey, uh, Mr. Chairman, point yes. of order. Did we vote on the findings of fact? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm yes. sorry. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Um, Mr. To Chairman? Approve. Yes. Would uh, the mover and the seconder entertain including the conditions imposed by the Board of Health? Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, yes. Amended to include the conditions by the Board of Health. And seconded with that uh, addition. Thank okay. You. It's been moved and seconded and amended. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and before we go on to the next item on the agenda, Charlene, yeah. could you give us a quick briefing on when we can vote and when we cannot vote for the alternates? I've had a couple Altern questions. Yes. Alternates are not eligible to vote on subdivisions. They are eligible to vote on uh, special permit related items, but not on subdivisions. Okay. And ANRs? And ANRs as well. Okay. Yep. I, I consider those part of the subdivision control out. Sorry. Okay. So preliminary plans, definitive plans, approval not required plans, alternates are not eligible to vote. Special permit, yes. Special permit, yes. And that would include site plan. Okay. Which brings us to the next item on the agenda. Um, and Mr. Chairman, if yes. you are going to have, um, I know we only have six regular members here tonight. So before the hearing starts on the next item, if you want to choose one of the alternates to who would be acting on this so that a full seven members are voting, that might be appropriate. Um, some boards like to wait until the very end to choose somebody, but I don't think that's really a good idea myself. Um, why, don't, why don't we do it, um, we alternate, which, okay, you get the vote. The next time you get the vote, that sound fair? You can remember that. Because <laughs> you won't. <laughs> be nice, be nice. <laughs> Um, uh, the next item on the agenda is the town of Harwich, um, PB 2016-16, town of Harwich selectman owner, and Eric Beebe? Yes. Rec director is applicant. Yes. Seek approval of a site plan special review, special permit, and use special permit pursuant to the code, the town of Harwich. Section 325-55 and Section 325-51 as set forth in the Mass General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 9. The Phase 3 plan seeks expansion of the existing recreational facilities for the property located at One Oak, known as Brooks Park in the Historic District. More specifically, the plan demonstrates construction of a new unpaved parking lot with 40 plus or minus spaces and a new 16 by 34 pavilion. The new restroom facility, the new tennis wall, and construction of a new half court, Brooks Park, is identified as Map 41, Parcel C6 in the RR Zoning District. Gentlemen. Okay, I'm Bob Caffrelli, town engineer. This is Eric, the uh, Eric Beebe, recreation director. Director. Thank you. Um, it's for the rec department, but I was helping them out with the design, and I, I drew the, the, the plan, and I'll be helping them. Uh, go out to bid on it. Uh, this is f phase three for improvements to Brooks Park. And it's basically um, putting in a 39 uh, space uh, parking lot, which the area is in dire need of that if you ever go there during the day, during the summer. So you have cars parking um, along the side of the existing parking lot all the way to the road. Um, also included, there's going to be a half basketball 
court. I think that for this site plan hearing, I, th I think the only issue is the parking. Um, uh, that's what triggered uh, uh, the site plan review. But, but th we're also going to be putting in a, a backboard for the tenants and a half a half a, a basketball court uh, and a gazebo or pavilion. Um, but as far as the parking lot, um, again, we have 39 spaces that provide two handicapped spaces from 25 to 50 uh, spaces you need two, zero to 25, one, 25 to 50 you need two. Even though the spaces on the existing area provides enough handicap for both parking areas, but since there are two distinct parking areas, I figured that it would be a good idea to have two uh, handicap spaces in the new one uh, close to the uh, uh, pavilion for handicapped people to enjoy uh, um, cooking out with their family you know, near the pavilion there. Um, I'm widening the entryway uh, to 20 feet and uh, it'll have to take out a little bit of the um, uh, existing grass area. Uh, to you know, have it come in properly and have it 20 feet. We're also going, we're also providing a, what's called a, a table, a crosswalk table. Um, what it is is a, uh, it's, it's a crosswalk, but it, it's raised about three or four inches. You have a six foot approach, three or four inches, and you have a six to 10 foot flat area, which is where the crosswalk is. And you have a six foot uh, taper down to the uh, three inches. It, it's a, it's a large uh, speed bump, um, which uh, tends to uh, slow the traffic down. Um, we're going to be keeping the original bike path, but we're going to uh, extend the fence to the front of the bike path. So it would encourage uh, people to get off the bike and walk across the walkway along with the pedestrians. Uh, they're supposed to be getting off their bikes anyway when they uh, cross travel ways. Uh, Mostly they don't, but they're supposed to do that, and this encourages them to do that. Um, we also have entrance and egress <coughs> to the bike path from the parking area. So this is another area where people want to uh, utilize the bike path. They can put their bike on their car and take it off the car and then you know, go on to the bike path from the parking area. Um, to the extreme east, we have a walkway five-foot walkway, and the walkway will extend uh, all the way down to where the new basketball um, half court uh, is going to be. Um, now, this did trigger, because this is in the habitat area for box turtles, it did trigger the uh, habitat uh, review, and I called up, uh, his name is Jesse Ledick from uh, the NHESP. Um, and I, I talked to him and uh, told him about our prior approval uh, in, in, at Brooks Park in 2010. Uh, we needed approval to uh, clear the uh, hollow uh, and uh, that also was a habitat. So I, I got the, the permit and the permission. And according to him, uh, this permit was good for three years. So it was good from 2010 to 2013. And then he said there's an automatic four-year extension, which is that extension. So he says this permit is good for this project um, because this permit is good until 2017. Uh, so we have the, the, the approval from the NH Division of Fisheries and Wildlife, uh, NH ESP. Um, and that's about it. Yeah, and just a little background on it. Um, we started several years ago, um, like, he, like Bob said, this is phase three. Uh, phase one was $10,000 for engineering design study. Uh, phase two, uh, we added uh, the two pickleball courts at the back of the tennis courts. And we also renovated the current basketball court. And um, we didn't expect it to be as much as it was, but we, when we put the pickleball courts, now we have well over 300 people playing pickleball. So with that comes more need for parking. <laughs> so we're, we're full there quite a bit, especially this time of year. <clears throat> so 
we saw the need for the parking. Um, this phase, like Bob said, also included a half basketball court so we could run some summer uh, outdoor basketball tournaments, um, which you need more than one court to do. Um, the pavilion area is something that we think can generate revenue for the town. Um, we could book weddings, reunions, all kinds of things like that, business picnics. Um, and then we're looking forward, there'll probably be one more phase to come, um, but this is what we're looking for here. And the, the parking is, is a necessity because we see it as we add more amenities, we see it getting more and more crowded. So that's the uh, history of the project. Could, could you be kind enough to, to comment on uh, Deputy Chief Gagnon and Sergeant Kaskarian's uh, I don't know if you have it in front of you. Yep. Yes, we do. Yep. I, I think he's he's asking that uh, on the extreme east that we widen that also to uh, 10 foot wide for bicycles. <coughs> uh, the reason we designed it this way is because we ha we already have two access and egress for bicycles. You know, uh, the, the, um, Eric and uh, the commission, uh, I think, uh, uh, agrees with me that it's nice to have a walkway where you can have pedestrians and not, you know, uh, w without the, the bother of uh, bicycles also. Um, we, we thought that with two accesses and egresses, there was really no need for a third one. Well, he also talks about a speed bump. Did you put that in? That's the table. That's the thing you talked about? Yeah, okay. that's the table. That, that was always considered to be in there. And I, seems to me, usually, if, and, and they seldom ask us yeah. for much. It seems to me, uh, Gagnon thinks, obviously he's a bicycle rider from, right. from the article, the piece that I'm looking yeah. at. Right. Uh, I, my instincts would to make it would be to make you put in what he wants. A third access me? Yeah. I'm not looking for a quarrel over the thing, but I mean, I. We could do it. I, well, it's just a matter of widen it, double, doubling the width. You put a pencil on there and double the width. But, yeah. Okay, before we, before we go any further, um, Charlene, do you have your comments? Um, actually, there's not a lot that I have to add to this. Um, I think Bob pretty much covered anything, everything and addressed um, conservation's issues, has addressed um, the police department, whether the board wants to have that uh, newer, on the easterly side, that walkway widened you know, you, you certainly can, can ask for that. Um, the health department's comments were based on an earlier plan, um, talking about septic system for a new restroom. The restroom is not part of this, it's actually part of phase four, so that is not applicable at this time. Um, as I said in, in my uh, staff comments, administrative requirements have generally been met. Um, Additional plans may be required if further revisions are made. So obviously if you require additional revisions, we'll need more plans. Um, <clears throat> and I did recommend conditions and I've noted those in vote number one uh, for your perusal be below. And that is outdoor lighting, if any, shall um, comply with Harwich Zoning Code Article um, 21. The applicant will need to file with um, the historic district uh, for approval. Any site changes resulting from their approval, um, review and approval shall be subject to further planning board review. Signage, if any, needs to comply with the um, Harwich Zoning Code for signage. And any changes or the expansions of the plan would be subject to further planning board review. Okay. Any comments from members of the board? Jim. Okay, just two real quick questions. Is this work going to be done in-house with town forces or is it going to be put out to bid for contract? It will be put out to bid. Uh, the highway department is going to help out with some of the clearing, clearing and grade. grading, okay. um, but it's going to be put out to bid. Okay, if everything goes properly, when do you expect the work to be completed? This fall. This fall, yep. okay, thank you. Yeah. Linda. Yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah. 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 You um, uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, I'm probably ex I'll just play my ignorance of the game of tennis. I don't play it. Uh, I see two tennis courts, and on each tennis court, four smaller courts. Is that the case? Yeah, those pickle are the pickleball. Pickle oh, pickle there's some pickleballs on there. You so. can fit, yeah, you fit um, actually four tennis, four pickleball courts on every tennis, tennis court. Okay, I didn't yeah. know you could do that. 
Okay, that's my question. Um, then, sort of south of the, the basketball courts, I see the contours. What are the, the contours are what, 10 feet, two feet, one foot? I mean, I believe that, I believe they're two foot, but we're not we're not going to be changing. We, there might be a little flattening. You have you know, some contours here, so there might be a little grading. It's pretty clear there are no trees there. No, there's so nothing there's, there. It's so if anything, thing. it's just a little moving of the dirt. Okay, so this depression is not that very deep hole that I see. Oh here. no, no, no. no, no that, I just that, want to. That's way over here. I just want to yeah, locate this, it. Yeah, that, the, it that's the hollow. Okay, that was my concern. Yeah, that's the hollow. 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 Yeah, that's the hollow
Yeah. So I figure that that's part of this phase, no, right? It's not. Oh. It's not. It's so phase that, four. Yep. So you can't believe everything you read. No. Okay. That, that was that never was, part that was of an, this phase. Okay. That now, was an error, uh, error. Yeah. but my understanding was when we had the meeting, the, the walkthrough meeting last year yep. at the park, yep. that the footpath around the holler, what do you want to call it, was basically scrubbed at that time. It is. But now it's back on the no, drawing board? No, we're talking about a trail throughout the woods right behind the parking lot and the tennis uh, pickleball court. Okay. Yeah. Nothing to do with the holler. Okay. Yeah. And, and also at the time there was a, a, <coughs> a proposal or at least a, a thought that there was going to be another access to the parking lot which was going to come up the original water company road, which yep. is still there. Yep. And once you mow it, it's still there. Yep. It's drivable. There's no current plans for that. Um, the commission's going to be meeting in August and again in September to talk about those final plans. Okay. Final plans. Then I would be... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I probably I wouldn't be your friend then because that goes right by my bedroom. Have, I haven't heard a single mention of a plan okay, for that's any good. additional access. Okay, yeah, so. because Route 39... Uh, not that it would generate more traffic, but it would generate more accidents. Yep, and we did consult with the uh, okay. police department on that as well. Yeah, that's and they're against it as well. That's good. Yep. I'm glad. <laughs> okay, they're my friends. Okay. We're on the same page. Okay, so um, uh, I'm, you know, I'm basically for this. I, I just want to see. I want to get an idea of what the whole package was. And yep. uh, so yep. there's a little more out there still floating around. Yeah. It's, it's mostly the biggest part is the bathroom and the additional playground equipment. I see. Okay, I'm not, not I'm, I'm for those. Great, yeah. great idea. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there any other comment? Yeah, Joe? Just, you are going to build this uh, pavilion? Yep, yep, that's part of this one. Part of that, yep. Thank you. And that goes through the historic review, yes, correct? Yes, we will. Um, actually, yeah. be meeting with the Okay. Any other questions from the public, the board? If so, we'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second it. It's been moved and seconded by Mr. McFarland and Mr. DeBaca. We close the public hearing. And Joe? I make a motion to approve the request for a fee waiver. They didn't request, but I... <laughs> That's right. We would like a fee waiver. <laughs> the town department, I think we should waive the fee. Oh. Is that a motion? I did. Oh, I'll second that. Then. It's been moved and seconded. Um, any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. I make the following motion to adopt. One, the proposed use for additional municipal services at Brooks Park is a permitted <laughs> municipal use in the residential-rural RR zoning district and is an appropriate location. Two. Said expansion plan, expansion plan of municipal facilities will benefit residents and visitors alike and will improve pedestrian <coughs> and vehicle safety at the park <coughs> due to the layout and design. Three, there will not be an adverse effect on the neighborhood and proper measures have been taken for parking area drainage. Four, the parcel is located in the Howard Center Historic District. Uh, Plans include adequate and appropriate facilities for the removal of storm water. And the next one is that the uh, applicant will uh, review with the deputy chief of police uh, uh, his uh, suggestions with respect to the park. So I'm not saying you have to do it. I'm just asking you to go and talk to Tom Gagnon yep. about it. Okay, oh, second. Have. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Um, any comments on the motion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Wait a minute, we're not done. Wait, we have to do oh, it on I'm official. Move to approve oh, yes. with conditions the application for the town of Howitch based on the foregoing findings and the fact that application meets the necessary requirements and criteria for approval pursuant to the code of the town of Howitch for the plan entitled Brooks Park Place, Brooks Park Phase Three, revised uh, most recently July 13th, 2016. 
prepared by Robert M. Caffarelli, a PE, Town and Howitch Engineering, and with the following additions. One, outdoor lighting, if any, shall comply with the Howitch Zoning Code, Article 21. Two, the applicant will need to file with the HDHC for approval. Any site changes resulting from the HDHC review and approval shall be subject to further planning board review. Three, signage, if any, shall comply with the Howard Zoning Code, Article 7, and shall be, shall be maintained to ensure both pedestrian and vehicle set safety. Four, any changes or expansion of the plans shall be, shall be subject to further planning board review. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. One more vote. One more One vote. Lord Jeff. One more Jeff. Oops. Bottom sorry. of page three. <laughs> I got it. Sorry. I saw it. Would you move to approve the special permit for 20 or more parking spaces? Move to approve the special <laughs> permit for 20 or more parking spaces. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Why don't, we deal, you why don't we deal with Mr. Caffarelli? It's just very simple. Okay. Absolutely. We would like the uh, building inspector capacity, or I would like, I don't know about, and I think another member of the board, the property down at the corner of Help me out. Sisson and 28. Sisson and 28. Mm -hmm. The sand pile. The mining operation. Operation that's going on behind the go-karts. Oh, oh, okay. Yep. We would like to ask you in your capacity, or I would ask you in your okay. capacity as a building inspector, if you can check and see if that is properly zoned for what's what they're doing there. Yeah, not the go-karts, the, the business going on behind it. Okay. I'm not the building inspector, but... Uh, I know that. I'm yeah, sorry. But as far as engineering. I, I know you're the town engineer. Yeah. You, maybe you, you may want to talk to the building inspector. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. So you want... Are, are they are they removing... Um, well, there's, they, they move a lot of I dirt. Guess, and there's now a stump dump, and there's a half yeah. a dozen cars and old trucks and buses and boats and a few yeah. other bits of miscellaneous yeah, deleterious that came in on the tide. I questioned it a few years ago, yeah. and it went like nobody was interested yeah. in my problem. And there's now a, a there's now a shaved ice stand on there. Okay, that would need a CV license. Just, but there's a gravel face there, right? Uh, huh? It, it's, it's no, 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 no. He no. doesn't. Every anything that's there, I think. Yeah. We may between you have to look at it. He doesn't re remove. Uh, I think he brings all that there. in. Yeah, I, I don't okay. think there's the, that, that it's like a gravel pit. I don't okay. think it is. Go yeah. ahead. I really haven't noticed. I, I really haven't noticed it. I don't have yeah. to look into it. Yeah. Charlene, uh, just you're you're going afar from what's on the agenda. Yes. Um, I think just that asking just a, that, that staff just look at it. Yeah, it's I'll, fine. I'll take a look at it. Okay. Yep. I, well, I, I had them here. That's why. I I, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'd appreciate it being looked at too, because I live right there. I know you do. Yeah, yeah. And I. I just uh, nothing to do with him, but it, Linda. Over yeah, the, the years, I've tried several times, and all of a sudden, it just John? like goes away. You know, nobody ever comes back and tells me yes, it is or no, it isn't. Okay. Keep it on the to-do list and keep asking. I, I, I'm with you. Okay. The next item on the agenda is you up again. I think it's not my phone. Um, it's PB 2016-17, Marie Norton, owner, and Mr. O'Reilly, surveyor, representative, seek approval of modification of a subdivision as set forth in Mass General Law, Chapter 41, Section 81K through GG. Specifically, the request is to revise the waiver granted under PB Case 2009-21 by eliminating the turnaround and the construction of the way within the road layout is shown on the recorded plan. Plan book 633, page 35. Property is located at 26 Oliver Snow Road, map 24, parcel E16 in the RR Zoning District. <clears throat> um, thank you again for the record. I'm John O'Reilly with J. O'Reilly & Associates. 
my left is Marie Naughton, uh, the current owner of the uh, parcel in question. Um, what we're looking to do, as my cover letter has, has hopefully clearly stated, is when we proposed this to uh, the planning board back in 2009, you had asked, you, you had granted us several waivers from the road construction, but part of the requirement was the construction of a 14-foot wide traveled way and a turnaround. The lot at the time was, was vacant. Uh, it has since been improved with a single-family home. And currently along that right of way is a driveway that leads directly up to the house. The property is under, uh, under agreement to be sold. And what they would like it to do is um, they started the conversation meeting with David Spitz. Um, David Spitz evidently had met with the fire chief or fire department about the need of the turnaround uh, that's identified on the plan of record. And I see you're looking at it, it's the 11 by 17. Um, and since we are only talking about one lot and basically a, a driveway, <coughs> um, David suggested that we uh, approach the board um, and ask for you to uh, modify the decision so as to eliminate the need for the 14-foot wide driveway of roadway and the turnaround and, in essence, um, rescind the covenant. Uh, I have uh, reviewed the... Um, the staff comments and um, agree with, with, with all of them. Obviously, this is, not, this is currently a single-family home driveway. It wouldn't be subject to plowing. Um, uh, I don't believe it's currently plowed now. Um, so we'd be happy to answer any questions, and Marie's here to, to answer any questions that I cannot. Okay, thank you. Um, first, uh, I would like to note for the record that um, Mr. Harris is an abutter and has recused himself from this um, from this vote. Uh, and next, Charlene, if you'd summarize the comments, please. Uh, certainly. Engineering stated that the original waivers granted appeared to be the minimum requirements we should accept. Police, no issue with the project provided the proposed modifications will still allow the quick and easy access for larger public safety apparatus such as fire department engines. Highway uh, road would not meet criteria for snow removal. Um, health conservation and fire had absolutely no concerns regarding this matter. Um, I think Mr. O'Reilly gave uh, another good overview of the history of this property. Um, so essentially, they could have asked for rescission of the 2009 plan, um, but because there are Zoning Board of Appeals variants involved in this that would kind of muddy the waters, they'd have to go back to the ZBA and do all it it would just be very cumbersome um in light of the situation um they did apply in this after speaking with the fire department and the former town planner david spitz and actually before david uh, left we talked about this particular application at length um and and i i am in concurrence that this is the the smoothest uh method by which to go um, when the subdivision was done Panhandle lots were not allowable. Um, they otherwise would have done it that way back then if they could have. Um, only one, one lot will be served by this driveway and no th sir, uh, further divisions of land can take place off uh, Moonbeam Path. And uh, if the board were to approve this at the time of endorsement, um, there would have to be a release of covenant from the 2009 agreement and covenant. Okay, are there any questions from the board? I Peter. don't really understand what's happening to David <laughs> um, I, um, I'm, I'm sorry, it may be, um, the 40 foot ran away with this sort of spoon shaped thing, uh, one part and a very narrow passage. What's really happening? Could you tell me what's really going on? <laughs> so, I'm, I'm not quite sure what, what I'm looking at and what is going to be accomplished. I really don't, but could you tell me? Um, <clears throat> I'll try. <laughs> it is, it is uh, uh, a little, what, what, it what, is a little, what, what, what did we approve and what is it the, going to be? The, the issue is, is that back in 2009, the applicant, um, um, Mr. Norton, uh, prior to his passing, 
uh, applied for and obtained a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals. To do what? To create a panhandle, excuse me, a right of way and, and um, create access for lot six. There was a question on lot, there was a lot, there were two lots here. Um, there was a question on having lack of frontage, I believe it was, and I am picking my memory back. So, um, and the way to go about doing it back and then was to apply for a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals um, with the proviso that we provide a frontage, which, which is the reason that the 40 foot right away and the half moon, if you will, uh, turnaround was created. So the variance was granted. We then applied to this planning board for a definitive plan. And if you look and on, on your on your prints, it's it's rather small, but um, you see right above your the signature block, there is a condition from the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, that area variances were granted on the condition that the required 20 foot setback. Um, well, this is a condition for the setback to the north uh, be left natural. Um, but the, um, the variances were granted on the area or lack thereof. And all we're looking to do is we're not changing the right of way and we're not, we're not interested at this point to go back to the Zoning Board of Appeals. We're just looking for, uh, to have you modify your decision to eliminate the need of the turnaround, uh, the, the, the 14 foot wide driveway and the turnaround that's shown on, on the plan of record. So instead of a Sort of this, instead of this shape, you want it to be a straight line? Well, basically, um, without revising the plan, which we really don't want to do, it's basically um, through this action, if, if, if successful, would rescind the requirement to build that, that, that 14 foot wide and that, that turnaround within the, within the circle. And it would become a driveway, and it, which it is now. Yeah. Um, the the right of way, the forty foot wide right of way, and the round portion to that right of way would all stay, as part, you know, of where the right of way is and where it's de uh, how lot six is defined. Um, but what would be the only elimination would be the need to con construct that turnaround. There's only one house there. There's only one house, and there will only ever be one house there. It's already there. It is already there, yes. On lot six? On lot six. Jim. Okay, um, just again for clarification, two things. Um, the driveway that you're talking about that will be built, is that what's shown here um, with the lines the, and the wording that says proposed turnaround? <coughs> the, the, the proposed turnaround and the line coming off all of the snow is all proposed. It was proposed back in 2009. Lot six at the time was a vacant parcel. Mm -hmm. Since that time, they, they, because of the relief granted by the variance provided and um, your endorsement of the right of way providing frontage, um, the house was, you know, the building permit was obtained and the house was constructed and is lived in. It's, 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 you know, six, six years old now or four, four years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the lot six house? Lot six house. So what's currently along that 40 foot right of way is, is a 10 foot wide, 11 foot wide driveway that services that leads from all of the snow into the house that's currently serving, the house that's on lot six. And there, and there, is, and there is a little jug handle at the top of the driveway. It goes into a two gar car garage and then we put a little jug handle to yes. the side so that it is actually 36 feet wide in but one section two cars deep. Okay, so then what's shown on this plan is not what's being proposed. There's a line on this plan that indicates sort of something within the right of way that has the sort of a jug handle and it says proposed turnaround. So that's not what you're proposing to do here then? All we're proposing to do is remove the requirement of constructing that 14 foot wide roadway in that turnaround. And you're not he, the, okay, then I'm confused as to what's going to replace it. Well, there is a driveway there now. 
Okay. That and that's not what is shown on this no. plan? No. Okay. What, what, what you are looking at is a plan from 2009. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is actually happening on the site, and that's why David and the fire mm -hmm. department met on site. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> What's happening on the site is a typical driveway leading off Oliver Snow that leads up to the residential home leads into a two-car garage, and then there is a jug handle, as Marie said, that allows someone to back out and, and traverse out towards Oliver Snow Road. Okay, but the driveway from Oliver Snow Road is within this 40-foot right-of-way? Yes. Okay, so it's within the right-of-way, and this is a private right-of-way? Yes. Okay, and who is responsible for maintaining that right? It would be the owner of lot six. Okay, and is that in the deed for the loaner? I believe the, and Marie, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the, 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 the purchaser is purchasing the lot six as it's labeled on this plan and right. the 40 foot right of way. They're purchasing the right of way, so They're that purchasing, would be part of yes. their property? So okay. there, there will only be one owner that will own and control everything from Oliver Snow up through the 40-foot right-of-way and entirely of Lot 6. Oh, okay, okay. Then that may make my, <laughs> my next question moot, and this is going back to the original first uh, approval, but I'm just a little bit curious as to why in that approval there was this very narrow part of Route 6 that goes along the right-of-way down to Oliver Snow Road. And you may not even lot six. Oh, lot six. I'm sorry. Uh, and y you may not even know the answer. I was just sort of curious. It just looked a little bit strange to me. Um. <laughs> Actually, if I might, I think that is. Um, I handed out to you all, and it's something. Actually, David um, provided for us uh, before the meeting because he isn't a butter to the property. There is a recorded uh, uh, buffer, 15 foot buffer. Oh, okay. okay. That's required for the property. Oh, okay. Um, so that, that would. So I believe that. that is part of. I don't know if that measures actually 15 yeah. feet, it but looks approximate. Um, you know that that I do believe that helps to represent that buffer area. Um, the driveway as it exists on the ground, it's my understanding, further provides for that legal buffer um, that exists over that lot for the abutter. So. To summarize this, if we were doing this now, a panhandle, a panhandle lot would answer the question. It would be a lot cleaner, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that's why we, uh, we yeah, proposed that. Linda. <clears throat> um, where's Moonbeam Path? That's the name of, the, of the, this right of way. It, it would have been 26 Oliver Snow Road, but at, I'm not sure whether it was Planning Board or Zoning Board required at the time that we give the driveway a name. Got it. Okay. Yes. So that's where Moonbeam Path is, is the driveway. That's right. Okay, thanks. And <laughs> Okay. Because I didn't see any path anywhere here, and I was thinking, you know, was this a, uh, you know, one of these ancient way things? But it's just the name of the, got it. And my other question is that this proposed turnaround, the authorized plan, so this proposed turnaround was not built, which was part of the authorized plan? That is, that is correct. Okay, I, just to be clear. Okay, thank you. It's, a, it's sort of an interesting thing, and I'm trying to get a true picture of it, so don't worry. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not worried. But <laughs> the, um, the, the, the sort of the, the circular shape uh, is sort of a moot point, and because it's gonna be, it's gonna stay there as, as a recorded line. Uh, that's correct. But you don't need it anymore to do whatever you want. Well, <clears throat> it yes, we still need it because it ties back into the variance that was granted back in 2009. Okay. In reality, no, we do not need it. Yeah. <coughs> and, and this ties back to what Marie and, and her attorney had talked to David about initially was, you know, they had two avenues. One, go through the re simple request of re having you rescind the requirement for the driveway and turnaround or go back to the Zoning Board of Appeals. And David felt that it was, um, and Marie's attorney concurred, that it was cleaner to, hopefully cleaner to get the turnaround just expunged. I mean, uh, the driveway just expunged. Okay, Joe. <coughs> I have a couple of questions. First and foremost, I, I, I'd like to see a plan 
that reflects what it's going to look like if we grant it. Okay? I, I, this, this is confusing to me, to be honest. That's number one. Number two, can you, either your applicant or you, tell me a little bit about the ZBA decision that says that the abutting property of Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Johnson would permanently remain in its natural unaltered state before and after the construction of any dwelling. Is there a house on their lot now? There's a, there's a house on lot six and I believe- No, 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 not on lot six, on the Joseph Johnson property. I, I believe so, yes. Back, the as you look, I'm looking property. at the plan you gave us about, in other words, um, they have a turnaround in front of their house. That's correct. Okay, and, and, the, and the house is back in here someplace if you can see my finger. I do see your finger. I believe there is a house there. Uh, I don't know exactly where it is in relationship to the line. That, um, I don't know if Mr. Johnson or, or the owner of the property is in the they audience, but tonight. they are, okay. But that requirement of the 20 foot buffer was part of the, um, uh, of the uh, review and approval of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Basically, they, they were looking, they were looking for a, it, my understanding of it was they were looking for a buffer to remain so someone couldn't come along and clear to the property line. So that, that's where the 20 that foot happened, buffer. You're telling us. Well, they, I, I'm sure they'll tell me that sooner or later. Well, I, I don't have a problem with what you want to do. I just think we should have a plan on record that shows what it's going to look like when it's done. If we approve it, this is, here's a plan and it's recorded and that's what we approve. You follow what I'm saying? Um, yes, I do. We were, we were hoping not to get involved with a recorded doc, you know, a recordable document, which would be a mylar. I, I don't think that, you know, if the majority of the board would like to see you know, how, again, we're working with a plan that's 2009 and it was vacant that's at the time. That's my problem, yeah. Um, but I don't think there would be an issue with us because, you know, we were involved with the Nortons when they, you know, developed the lot. We did the septic design. We did the as-built for the house. The only th piece of information we do not have is the driveway location. So we, if, if, if you would be happy with this proposal that we could certainly do a, a plot plan showing you know, the house, you know, whatever deck work is on it, and then the driveway as it comes in off all of the snow, and that would give you written record of what's there. If That's really what I'm looking for. Because if I may, generally a plan and profile is not recorded, and that's kind of what you're asking for, but I think um, the remedy I, I, I proposed just, I is, I just want to see a yeah. plan yeah. that when it's mm. all done, this is what it's going to look like. This, this plan doesn't show that. Yes. Yeah, and if I may, Mr. Chairman, that was my original question. I was sort of confused as to what it is we were trying to accomplish. Let's say I'm taking issue with it, but I, I said, well, what is this really going to be? Jim. Okay, um, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, I have a question. Um, what is your concern about going back to the Zoning Board of Appeals and then reapplying under the Panhandle lot zoning, which Basically, in effect, the you know what you're doing <coughs> through this process is, you know, a, as the chairman had stated, this if your original application had been done now, you could easily do it under the Panhandle lot zoning. Um, so my conf my question is, what is your concern about going back to the zoning board of appeals, um, you know, and applying under the Panhandle lot? Well. Um, twofold. Um, one, uh, in in talking with staff, um, I, I know Dave is no longer with with the board. Mm -hmm. um, in talking with staff, uh, those were the two alternatives. In fact, um, Charlene does outline that that is an alternative that Correct. you could deny, and we could go back through the zoning board of appeals. Um, the <coughs> we would we were. Uh, attempting just to simply expunge the requirement of the driveway and the turnaround. That's really what we're asking. Um, it is still a single family home, it's still a lot. So I think it's twofold. One is, is the timing involved 
and the fact that you know costs would need to be incurred to develop a new recordable document that would you know expunge the panhandle uh, there'd be a new you know filing with both the zoning board of appeals and the planning board um, it would still be a definitive plan process so again you get into just like we did with the Bordens, you, you filed the plan, you would endorse the plan, there'd be an appeal period, so it's timing. Um, and I can only assume, because I wasn't the one that talked to David directly, it was, it was um, your attorney. Um, and it was more of a, less of a paper um, issue and, and timing, that's, that's why. Okay, but on the timing issue, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The house is already built on this lot, correct? Yeah, but they're, they're, they're trying to sell the property. Oh, it's under it's under agreement. Okay, so that's the timing. is that's the, the timing, timing issue that you know uh, going this route would expedite the sale if you say it's under agreement, and going the other route would delay the sale of the property? Is that the timing issue? Or lose it? Or, or, or as Marie said, or lose it. Right. Okay. Obviously, the issue of the covenants came up. I can only, again, I don't represent the buyer. Um, that I can only assume that the covenant issue came up if this lot was sold, whoever owned the lot would be responsible for constructing that driveway and the turnaround. Correct. So seeing that the lot doesn't need the turnaround, so, you know, per the meeting with the fire department, we just are looking to simply expunge the requirement of the driveway and the turnaround. <laughs> Okay, I, I think at this point in time, if we ask members of the public, that might that might put some light on this. Would that be okay? Mr. Chairman, yes. before we do that, um, I, I, I'm looking at the plan that you submitted to the Zoning Board of Appeals. That's not the ZBA plan that you have right in front of you. This, I believe, is the plan. That's the easement plan that... David Harris provided to the board. Okay, uh, my only, you know, I raised the question is, uh, shouldn't this easement show? <clears throat> Again, we're, de we're dealing with a plan from 2009. The easement came in in 2010 after this plan was adopted and recorded. From the ZBA? No, this this plant this the easement I believe is a utility easement, or a for a pole. Um, if you're looking at that sketch, it says proposed pole location, um, and then a 15 foot wide easement is marked on that plan. That that marking of the proposed pole, the hatched area was something that was drawn in on that plot plan. Right, and that has nothing to do with the zoning board of appeals. Right. No, I. I doesn't make any difference to me. I, I, I guess that all that does is reaffirm my feeling that at some point, and I understand your client's probably going to have to spend some money, that, that we should have a plan on what's on the ground now. I, I don't or think what, I shouldn't say it that way. I'm sorry, Jim. What's going to be on the ground if we grant I don't, what you're I, looking for? I think um, Marie can feel free to kick me under the table, but I don't foresee doing a plot plan being a delay. We have an appeal period, you know, if you were to rescind it, there's an appeal period involved. Um, and w during that time, we could certainly prepare a, a plan that addresses the, your comments, the house, driveway, the easement on the south side, as well as the easement that's noted in the Zoning Board of Appeals um, decision. Um, and then that way you would have a, a record or plan that of what's on the ground, or what's on the ground, and would be a file. I, I, I'm it not just saved, to record it. It, it, it mean, would just save us. We have it in our records, that's it, all. and that would. I, I think that's a happy medium, if it satisfies you and still kind of keeps us on track with with the timing. Okay. Um, and and there's a actually there's a good mechanism for that. Um, there is the 21 day appeal period. The board after that appeal period would have to release the existing covenant. Um, that exists, and what you can do is, as a condition of approval, if you feel appropriate, is that the board will not um, uh, release that covenant until such time as you have that plan. That's your mechanism. 
to ensure that you get that plan. Okay. We'll we'll open it up Not to that the I open it up to the public. John to do it anyway, but <laughs> who wants to go first? Hi, my name's Joe Johnson, Johnson Blaming. I'm I'm the abutter to the north. Okay. Uh, my only concern was if you do away with a covenant, is the I have a twenty foot buffer that Joe was talking about that Marie put in along my property. That's what we requested. But a little it's referenced in this plan. It's in the covenant. Is it, isn't it recorded? It's yeah. not on the plan. But when, when Dave, Dave, had, a the plan, Dave had a separate deal. It's not on the plan when you went to the Zoning Board of Appeal. Yeah. yeah. And they, they, you know, they, what do you call it? Acknowledged it or whatever. They, they built the house in, uh, um, what it was, was it was an unbuildable lot to begin with. They modified the lot to, to get the frontage. And Dave has a deal where he has a 15 foot buffer along the driveway. I read that. But I don't think that's in the covenant. You have a separate deal. Separate. But I'm just wondering if we're still covered. It, um, you know, she, she has the driveway in there. I have no problem. It doesn't affect me. My buffer, I just want to make sure my buffer's there. Where is the Captain, buffer? Captain, I have a question for you. Sure. How it, much, it shows how on much, that. How much land I can show on this. No, how big the is thing your I handed out to total lot? I, I have a two and a quarter acres that they subdivide into two 40,000 square foot this lots. This plan isn't quite clear about that. And, no. and I had to put the uh, panhandle in There's no 20 foot I, for yeah, the 150 it's foot lot. And they wouldn't allow me a, a curb I cut for the it. front lot. I had 180 feet of frontage, but they said there were too many curb cuts on uh, all of the snow. And then this came along and they gave me a 35 foot. Every, every driveway on the uh, street has two driveways anyway, except for me. That, that's my beef, that's not, not this. I just wanna make sure that the, when they void the covenant for the driveway, that it, she you wants you to You maintain the protection, protection. That I get my protection and Dave gets his. I think his. it just gets put on the plan. It, it, yeah. Actually, it already exists on the plan and I believe it's for part me, of. For me, but I didn't know about Dave as far as the 15 foot buffer. That's something is. different. Well, is That's that something that could be included in a future cover? Well, it no, it, it, they're, they're I don't know what the. They're completely different. Okay. That's, that's but you, but you remain covered. Yeah, the, now, the, if you do away with a turnaround, does that uh, increase the building area for that uh, for the lot as far as no. uh, setbacks and all that? Mm -mm. No. You know, for expansion though. Where is the 20 foot buffer zone? It's not shown on this plan okay, because it's it was, not, shown, it's on not plan. shown on this plan. Thank yes. you. It, what it is, it is a note on a recorded subdivision plan, yeah. and that note remains. Okay. So it's, it's, at the it's, it's at also the top. noted in the Zoning Board of Appeals approval, which is a recorded document. That remains. So those two documents remain. In the covenant itself, I don't believe there's anything about the 20 foot. I just, no. The covenant only deals with the method of construction of the road. So your 20 foot buffer remains. Is, remains on the plan, remains as part of the decision the ZBA did back in 2009, that doesn't go away. Okay. Okay, Linda. Last, uh, one more time. Where is the 20 foot buffer? Oh, it's along the, the property line with Mr. Johnson, which is on the north side of the property. Linda. Thank you. That's all I was trying okay, to get to. Okay, all right, Where sorry, is it? all right. It, it, to answer <laughs> the question. To answer the question, Linda, it's far removed from the one we're talking about. Got it. I just, when somebody says it's on a plan, I don't see it on the yeah, plan. Yeah, I, I was thinking of. And next, to get everything straightened away, uh, Mr. Harris. I was Harris. thinking of David's. David? You going to recognize this witness? Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, my name's David Harris. I'm the abutter to the south. Uh, I purchased the property in 2008 from the Downs, so it shows their name on it, but I have been the owner since 2008. And I'm going to speak in favor of the applicant's request. Uh, the applicant has built a driveway that is about 20 feet from the south property line. The 15-foot buffer, and then there is a, a grass strip on each side of a, a 10 or 11-foot driveway. So the actual width of the passable road is closer to 20 feet than it is to 10 or 11. So for in case there's apparatus and so on that needs to get in there for an emergency, there's really plenty of room. Uh, the, the driveway uh, parallels my property line and there is adequate turnaround in front of the house, in front of the garage, uh, so there's really not a problem for, from access. I've driven in there myself, I know it works. Uh, I noted that we've approved a, uh, a subdivision for Mr. Borden earlier that showed the 35 foot panhandle right of way. It didn't show the driveway. We went ahead and approved it anyway. Here we're showing 
the, the 40 foot right away and the driveway is there existing, but I, I'm wondering why the board is asking for a document showing the driveway when you don't require it for other applicants. I, I, this plan, it, to, to, I, I guess the question is addressed to me. I, I understand it's submitted in good faith. I have no question about that. I, I just think that if I'm gonna vote to approve, and of course I'm gonna vote to approve, that when we've all said and done with this project, we should have a plan what's on the ground. That, that's what I'm trying to get across. This, this does not reflect what's on the ground. I, I don't doubt what everybody says is on the ground. I'm just saying we should have a plan that says that in our file. I, I think maybe to summarize this, um, <clears throat> if I can, everything I've heard, Mr. Johnson's concern is is probably 150 or 200 feet away, and your uh, your buffer remains, and and David would like to, to see that remain what's currently there, and and Joe would like to see it on a plan, uh, and we can probably do it all within the review period if you could just simply do a plot plan. You don't have to be a recordable plan. If that would that solve everybody's I problem? I just asked Marie if she had a problem with us, you know generating a, an existing condition plan, if you will. Exactly. Yeah. That shows the house, driveway, turnaround. Uh, we will show on that plot plan the 20 foot to the north and the 15 foot pole easement. Excellent. And, and that just, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. Good, yes, and I, yes. Just don't, just, do, don't muddy the waters now. No, I'm not muddying the waters. <laughs> <laughs> well, I muddy them a little bit, not much. Um, I'm running out of paper, so you can't No, you, you don't have to write this down, then. <laughs> My point is, and I, I hear what, what, what David says, but my point is, he says, the other one didn't show a road. The point is, this does. So if you were to remove it, then it would be ambiguous. But in this case, it isn't ambiguous. It shows you that there is a road then and there. And maybe and this is sort of, I feel the same way a little bit. But I have no issue with the, with the concept in general. Is that okay? A question, Mr. Riley. One of the things, and I don't want to make this as part of the motion if you don't agree. <laughs> it says here, Thank you for giving me the opportunity to disagree or agree. Absolutely. <laughs> Following the end of the appeal period associated with, associated with the board's decision, the applicant may apply for a release of covenant recorded as book 24303, page 82. That should be in there? That, that's what we will be doing, yes. yes. All right. Okay. That goes to what um, Charlene had said. About are there any further comments from the public? Any other comments from the board? I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Seconded. It's been moved and seconded by Mr. McCrow and Mr. DeBarca to close the public meeting. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Move that we vote to adopt the following findings of fact. One, the subdivision way serves a single home. Two, a board of appeals variance exists on the property limiting the preferred solution to eliminate the road in favor of a panhandle. Three, following a site visit by the fire and, fire and planning departments, the way and the turnaround have been deemed unnecessary as a residential driveway and would be suitable for a panhandle lot. Four, all zoning board of appeals conditions shall be maintained as noted on the plan. Five, uh, the way known as Moonbeam path, path and its fee would continue to exist. Six, no snow removal activities from the town will be available. Seven, following the end of the appeal period associated with the board's decision, the applicant may apply for a lease of covenant recorded as, as, as book 24303, page 82. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Uh, Vote to approve the applicant's request to waive all road design standards. Second. Second, moved and seconded. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Move to approve the, the modifications of subdivision plan from Renaughton as requested thereby, eliminating the need to construct the way within the road layout as shown on the recorded plan, plan book 633, page 35. And moved and seconded. Any comment? Are we requiring Regarding the condition that they have to? Yes. I'm going to do that next. 
I, I probably, we shouldn't probably second yet. I got more to the motion. Mm -hmm. uh, further move to approve, approve with conditions the modification of subdivision plan from Renaughton as requested thereby, eliminating the need to construct the way within the road layout as shown on the recorded plan book 633, uh, page 35. Further to continue the, nope, that's it. Well, the following conditions are imposed. You want to impose a condition that they are required to provide the existing conditions plan prior to the release of covenant. Yes, that's what I want to do. Second. I second that. And Mr. DeVock has seconded. Any comments? No I'm one? confused. I'm sorry because we're the ones doing the recording. There was a motion and second and then there was another motion and second. Do you want to withdraw your first motion and your first oh, second? I see they're two different things. No, they're not. Y you approved it without conditions and then you approved it with conditions, sir. That moved being it with conditions. Moved, moved it with, it con with yes. conditions. Yes. We moved. Yes. Move to approve it first and then oh. move to approve it with conditions. We'll go with the second one. We'll remove the, the first. One. Okay. I just wanted to clarify yeah. for the record <laughs> keeping. You need, those in. you need those in. Yes. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments on that motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. The, e the easement thing I agree, can I you get that back? Because that was our original. I'm sorry. Um. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, the public meetings are closed. And the Thank you. Sorry about that. First item of new business. Can, can you hold on a second so I, I can catch I up? I certainly <laughs> can. It's like, ah, oh, wait a minute. You wrote it up so efficiently we didn't have to worry too much about it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Oh, it's hmm? I'm good. Uh -huh. Uh, move to adopt the minutes of July 12, 2016. You all have a copy. Seconded. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been moved and seconded to adopt the minutes of July 12, 2016. Any comments? Obviously perfectly printed. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Discussion of the rules and regulations as it pertains to the number of plans for submittal. Um, it, it became clear to me that um, the board members weren't actually getting the full size set of plans prior to the hearings. Right now there's a limited number of full size plans that are provided to the board members. So Elaine and I were talking about this and wanted to know if you all were interested in um, making it, we'd have to change the, the rules and regs which would require public hearing but do you want more full-size sets of plans so that you can get a full-size set? Why don't we save a tree? I want to have some. Okay. Yeah, me That's too. Yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, we I'd just like to see the full size at the meeting. Yes, yes. But I don't need them yeah. in the mail. Sure. Charlene, I, I think the half size are very good and very yep. helpful, okay. and I was happy to see them. Yep. What might help is just you know, to make everybody aware that the full size are available mm -hmm. in the planning department office should anybody want to go And I think anywhere. Elaine does say that when she sends you the it, packets, but I, I, I think yeah. I, whether it's said or not, it's I It's only my it's second all, meeting, so it, I'm it, still figuring things out. It's always been understood. <laughs> yep. I mean, if I ever wanted to look at a plan, I went in, and Elaine was always very cooperative in yep. getting that out for me. So. Especially for those people with glasses. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is pretty much all, all of us. Pretty much everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Said maybe Alan. <laughs> <laughs> so nope, that's the only thing that that I wanted to ask. Okay. Um, in other communities I've been in, they wanted the big plans and everything else, and so we just wanted to make it clear. No. Thank you. We we and wrecked 25 tree. trees tonight, so we can save a few. Um, authorization references for members' signatures. 
as the board is aware, um, you sign plans and you sign special permits. And we have to record those signatures at both the Registry of Deeds as well as the land court. Because there has been a change in membership, um, we do need to update that list and that signature list. So I do have that here. Uh, we will have to get Tom Stello to come in and sign. So, but we have Trip. the letters prepared for you. Ship it around. If you are so inclined to sign, and make sure you please sign above your name. <laughs> <laughs> Could you send a pair of glasses around with it too? Yeah, it's, it, I've seen it happen. It's like, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> um, old business. Does anyone have any old business? We had Sisson Road on there, but that got taken care of nicely. Thank you, Joe. Um, and <clears throat> I know that's been an item that we've talked about several times, or several of us have on Sisson Road. And I think you're right, we just keep at it because it's not the prettiest site in town. Well, I, I, I just have a sense that building inspectors over the years have not been willing to take on that particular landowner. And uh, it just isn't right, it really is. No, the rules are for everybody. I, 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 I agree couldn't with agree that. with you more. No, just not willing to take someone on is irresponsible. I agree. Mm -hmm. With regard to old business, Mr. Chairman, uh, could I ask uh, that we uh, have a, a moment of silence? Uh, we lost, uh, I think he's a former member of this board. I know he was um, uh, chairman of the um, Capital Outlay, and I know he served on a lot of other boards, uh, uh, Pete Watson, within the last couple of days. So I'd ask for a moment of silence in respect mm -hmm. for uh, the loss of Pete Watson. Thank you very much. Briefings and reports. Okay, I have one thing, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Community Preservation Committee has requested that the Planning Board vote on its representative to the Community Preservation Committee. I don't think that's something we have to do tonight, but if we don't do it tonight, it would probably be advisable to do it at our next meeting. Who is that person? That's you, is it? Uh, uh, right now is, is me. Um, I have been reappointed by the Board of Selectmen, but I know in the past year there has been some controversy over uh, some of the uh, votes at the Community Preservation Committee. And should this board decide that they would like another representative, I would be happy to resign my position and allow the board's choice to take over that position. I don't agree with some of your votes. But yeah, I think we know voted, that, Joe. <laughs> but I think you've done a great job. Well, you, thank really you, Joe. Done. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's fine. So I move that uh, Jim Atkinson be reappointed as our representative to second. the Community Preservation Committee. It's been moved and seconded. Got that down, Charlene? Yep. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, I think. <laughs> Do we know if Mr. Atkinson wants the position? Well, he, he, yeah. I, I, I can I only assume to, he did. I am willing to serve. Jim? Yes. Did, did uh, they come back with those two houses in the campground that you're... No. Oh, they have not? No, nothing. Bob, no... You haven't heard anything more about those, have you? Oh, there's, there were two houses in the campgrounds that came before right. your committee. Yeah. And basically the campgrounds told mm -hmm. them they didn't comply. And uh, uh, Attorney Kroll represented both the folks. I think you mean the, the that, was that was ZBA. Yeah, that wasn't CPA. Uh, that, that was, was ZBA. CPC. No, it was historic. It historic. 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 Okay. I'm oh. sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. It was historic. You're right. Okay. Uh, are there any other briefings and reports? That's the one that was lost by a voter. Okay. Yeah, would you like to come up with that? You have a briefing? No. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> well, we're delighted to provide the entertainment. Um, if there's no. <laughs> yeah, we forgot to ask for public comment on yeah. that. Larry. 
If <laughs> there's no further business before the board, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you.